You're watching Food is Medicine TV where we help you heal from the root cause. This is part two of the ABCs of minerals and we are literally gonna go into minerals from A to Z and give you a really good quality understanding of what they do in your body, how they can contribute to myriad of functions and ultimately help you feel and look better. Lights, camera, action. Here with me today is Rick Wagner. Hi, Rick. How are you, Krista? <laughs> it's nice to be back with you. Oh, same here. Clinical nutritionist, the encyclopedia for all things minerals, top quality. If you missed our first show, you've got to go back and watch that show to really understand how important minerals are to maintaining all aspects of your health for the rest of your life. So, Rick, you're the mineral man. I want you to tell us about what are the most important aspects of all these minerals. Okay, I'm gonna fire you with questions. A to Z. Okay. Wow. A to Z. I can jump into, you know, I'm a nutritionist, don't worry. Okay. The first mineral we're talking about right here is boron. What's boron? Why do we need oh. it? Well, and it's, it's really funny because you know where it, where it, what it is, it's borax. It mm -hmm. comes out of the soil, it is very, very essential for good bone strength, mm -hmm. the production of hormones. This is huge in a society that is really hormonally imbalanced. Right, and, and very possibly mm -hmm. a lot of that is due to the deficiency of boron. Yeah, and boron also really helps you. It provides the enzymes that help you use your antioxidants better, right. correct? Right, to make C-reactive protein and other, other immune, immune factors that will keep you much more healthy. C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker for the heart, so it helps keep your heart healthy. Mm -hmm. And then calcium, okay, we know we need calcium for bone health and for nerve function, but what's, what else? Why and, else do we need enough calcium? And, and what's interesting is how much do we really need, number mm -hmm. one, but number two is it has, it has some very, very interesting and distinctive roles. It is essential for blood clotting. Hmm. Hemophiliacs, I am sure, have no calcium in their system. Oh, wow. It is essential for energy production and it's essential for nerve transmission, but not in huge quantities. Think mm -hmm. about how we got calcium 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't available in the dairy store, I mean in the mark supermarket, and there was no refrigeration. Maybe you got cheese once in a while if you were really lucky. We got calcium from greens that we yeah. ate that grew out of the ground. And there wasn't, we didn't get anywhere near a thousand milligrams. Our calcium is much more um, dose related to what you would get naturally. And more bioavailable, so your body Far can use it efficiently. Yes. Okay, so I love chromium. A lot of people are deficient in chromium because they can't regulate their blood sugar. It helps them regulate their blood sugar. And what else? Well, that probably is the most significant role of chromium. Mm -hmm. And what's happened today is it's been refined out of our diet. Yeah. If you are not eating full-on whole grains, you are not getting and, the and, complete and whole, foods, whole grain. The complete whole grain. That's also maybe soaked a little for better bioavailability right. before you cook it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so chromium, you guys, and we use it in our adrenal programs because blood sugar regulation is, is like the one thing that will help you live longer and better across everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, copper's next. And one thing that I didn't know before filming this about copper is that it's essential for collagen production and everybody's taking collagen all over the place. So explain that a bit. I, I do not really know quite how it works as far as the production of collagen. Again, it's an, it, it activates enzymes that do it, but it's working then in conjunction with silica. Mm, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yes. And the other aspect of that is, is that it really helps in the body's ability to manage iron and zinc. So if you have enough copper, then you may be able to maintain decent ferritin levels. Mm -hmm. Interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I learned here today. Okay, now iodine. <clears throat> we love iodine. And we don't we, get enough. We love it to support the thyroid, we don't get enough. I'm, I'm going to skip ahead and so let's talk about iodine and let's talk about selenium at the same time Good because idea. we have a lot of thyroid problems and we also have a lot of Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid disorder where we need the selenium and we can't necessarily take the iodine without the selenium. 
And what's fascinating about that is, okay, where can we get our iodine and our selenium? It turns out that iodine is not an element that you, f you find naturally in the soil. Mm -hmm. Iodine is manufactured in the sea mm -hmm. by seaweed mm -hmm. and kelp. And so it turns out also that that same seaweed does make selenium. Otherwise, you know, to get your selenium, normally mm. you want, they recommend eating Brazil nuts. Well, is that it? They is don't really work as well to refill selenium stores. Right. So that's, what the, that's the final uh, right. verdict there. Yeah. Right. And so in research done on tissues of the, the breast, thyroid, and prostate in men, they found that cancerous tissues were d completely devoid of iodine and selenium. Healthy tissues, on the other hand, had good levels of iodine and selenium in them. The reason is the presence of heavy metals, particularly mercury, mm -hmm. because the body is using up its iodine stores and its selenium stores to try to pull out the mercury out of the, out of the tissues. And when you have amalgams or other steady sources of mercury, you deplete those two elements quickly. You have to be taking a lot. We all know someone that's been affected by cancer and how having adequate mineral sources can help you prevent that. This is such a simple way to support your health and to safeguard your health. And then also, you know, Rick was talking about heavy metals. That's something that is the underlying root cause of cancer and something that everybody should know if they have and address it seriously. It's not something to put off for a few years when you get some more time. Okay, next, your number one product, the reason why you got into this, it made huge strides in your own life of giving you back your mobility in your neck and avoiding surgery for bone spurs. That's correct. And that's silica. I know you can talk about it till the cows come home, but just give me the nuggets, you know, about silica. The basic knowledge of silica or the, the function of silica, I think was um, developed or understood around the 1920s, 1930s but really wasn't put into any practice until the 1970s when a, a Dr. Edith Carlisle at UCLA did extensive studies over about a 10-year period on silica in animals. Mm. And she primarily used chickens, uh, I think some rabbits and rats, but what she, had, she, she did, would do was exclude or restrict the silica intake of the animals and see how they developed. And in particular with chickens, from an egg <coughs> through to a maturation of a chicken um, without the silica in their diet. Those poor chickens. They, yeah, they, would, they grew to half the size right. and no, the feather development and their beak development and their bone development was extremely impaired. Mm. She added it back in, no problem. And so that was the, the, the real um, the raw material for the analysis that we did to determine what was, it was, what was going on. It, Dr. Edith Carlyle was amazing. Mm. And from there, we have taken it to, okay, how, how can we make it into a format that's really, really easily taken and bio, uh, very, very bioavailable, mm -hmm. and it's in this liquid format. What's interesting about a chicken is that, have you ever walked or seen a chicken in, a, in, a, in the yard and had, watch it pick at the ground? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not pecking at seeds because it ate those seeds up a long time ago. It's pecking at mica. So it eats the, it eats the mica, turns the mica into calcium. That's pretty incredible. Yes, and in fact, the human body can do the same thing. It can, can, turn, it can turn silica into calcium. Okay. Okay. Our so. bodies are amazing. Yes. And uh, it's a beauty product, girls, for skin, hair, and nails. And I just uh, was washed my hands in the bathroom, and I saw that you have a moisturizing lotion with, with silica. Right. So I'm excited to have that be my new moisturizer. The next order of business here is going to be sulfur. I would say its major role is in quelling inflammatory response, mm -hmm. helping the body to deal, the, and, and, and keeping in mind that an inflammatory response is natural. Mm -hmm. It's the way we deal with pathogens that we're exposed to, um, to get rid of them. Yeah. And what the sulfur does is help in quelling that response. It is also very important for bone health and, um, and just immune function. So you're saying that sulfur 
can help lower the inflammation set point yes. of a body, which yeah. is amazing. So inflammation is your body's natural response to any kind of invasion. But what happens, it's good, it's healthy, we need it. And what's happening, what I'm finding in droves, is that the inflammation set point is set higher. Like Time Magazine, you remember the cover of that magazine? Inflammation is a silent killer. And now the body's living in a chronic state of inflammation, which is the beginning root cause of all disease. Yes. So having enough sulfur in your diet. What foods do we get sulfur from? Cru mainly cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. and like eggs? Cabbages, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, garlic is an incredible delivery mechanism for, uh, and onion mm -hmm. for um, uh, sulfur. Great. Now let's talk about magnesium, <laughs> right? Magnesium is amazing. It's, science has identified at least 300 enzyme functions mm -hmm. that, that magnesium catalyzes or makes work in the cell. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> your, your heart can't relax without it, your muscles cannot relax without mm -hmm. it. So anytime you have a muscle cramping, magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, Any cramping, ladies, around PMS time as well, you know, magnesium deficiency. Headaches. Headaches, yes, magnesium can help with headaches. Yes. Um, and nerve function, right. and clicking you into your parasympathetic nervous system, getting you out of fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Maintaining good bone health is mm -hmm. very, very important for bone. Mm -hmm. So um, It's pretty much, we did a whole show on the miracle of magnesium. It's, it's, it's really good. Okay, now we did talk a lot about zinc in the last show, but now we're going to touch on it again. So here we are, A to Z, zinc is the final singular mineral to discuss. Zinc is, Immunity. is really, really significant especially with our immune system. Mm -hmm. But also again, our taste of, uh, or our sense of taste and smell, bone strength again, nerve strength. It works a lot in conjunction with nerve, um, nerve sheath protection and, and, and stability. And what we see a lot is de the degradation of the nerve sheath which then creates issues. Are you talking about the myelin sheath? Yes, the myelin sheath. So the myelin sheath is the electrical insulator mm -hmm. of your nerve cells. It's very important. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that zinc had a, a major it function has a role in the myelin in sheath. Yes, along with okay. silica. It's so incredible. Okay, so you make your large bottles. I take the smaller bottles. They're more concentrated, less water. And if this is completely overwhelming to you, I get it, I understand. Uh, this is a, a mineral, the multiple minerals where you're getting all of your minerals in one place. And I had said, this is what I, I give to my son, put it in his water bottle, put it in his, in his milk bottle, his goat milk bottle. And so your general advice for refilling your mineral supply, and making sure you cover all of these bases to get all the wonderful benefits that we just discussed would be what? A hair mineral analysis. Hair mineral analysis. Don't yes. guess at it, test it. They're 100 bucks. You can order it from your website, right. free. Send in your hair, get it back, see exactly what minerals you're deficient in, and then you can supplement accordingly. Right. Okay. And what else should they do? In their water or on their food? Salt. Yes. Good quality salt. Sea salt. No and table salt. That's not even real food. Okay. Yeah. Pink and, salt. And, and, and real quickly, salt. with regards to table salt versus sea salt, what's mm -hmm. happened is historically we use sea salt for everything. It was our supplement, our mineral supplement. We would preserve fish with it. We would preserve meats with it. We would preserve mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And, and um, that became our real source of all the minerals. What we've done is we've discovered that there is a source for minerals, these sea salt, that is not polluted in any fashion. Mm -hmm. So the question is how, how polluted really is the ocean? I, I think that there, there are some issues mm -hmm. depending upon particularly where you're sourcing this, but the sea salt we're getting is bubbling out of the ground at 11,000 feet in elevation in the Andes of Peru. This is incredible. It's, it's amazing. And, it's, and we it's still really discussed last time, we're not quite sure how that's happening, well, yes, how that's even possible, right. but we'll take it. Right. Um, right. Okay, just before we wrap up, you reminded me of a question I forgot to <coughs> ask when we were talking about iodine and seaweed, and we get the question a lot, is there any non-polluted iodine? Now you get the seaweed from Japan or the seaweed, we say, oh, because of the radiation, maybe you should go through, you know, get Korean seaweed. What is... We've, we have found a source of seaweed okay. that is amazing. It is sourced from Patagonia. 
look at you so, uh, sourcing yes. from South America. Right. Okay. And if Patagonia, from my perspective, is as pristine an area on the, that right. there is on the planet. Right. There's no one that lives around there, um, so there's no sources of pollution, and uh, it's truly, truly an amazing spot. We and the, the, we resell this particular product on our website. We do not manufacture it, okay. but it come. It was developed by two Russians that worked in the Russian government during the Cold War, and they had built huge buildings with all kinds of of. Um, sensing devices for the checking out on what the Americans were doing, right? Well, they found out that after about every 30 days, people got so burnt out that they had to go and take a, at least a 30 days off. During that time, though, they fed them seaweed. Hmm. This, this seaweed was harvested off of the Russian coast on the you know, eastern seaboard of Russia. It, re it resolved all of the issues that these people had been experiencing with all of the EMFs and other electromagnetic frequencies that they were being exposed to in these surveillance buildings. That's incredible. Yes, that was seaweed. And so these two guys, it after they- It was medicine at its finest. Yes, after, mm -hmm. they, after they left the, the, the service of the Russian army or whatever it was, the CIA that they were in, they said, we're gonna start making this. Well, they, then they, so they started harvesting off Russia, mm -hmm. but then they got into some big conflicts with some other country or some other company. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, heck, we'll just go down to Patagonia. There you go. Now they just need to start selling it in those sea snacks. Right. Well, we yeah we do have it. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like like kale. But, yeah. But uh, they have it. We have it in capsules, and it's um, really easy to take. And it's I take it. I take it every day. Perfect. Yes. You are a brilliant wealth of knowledge. Thank you for having me and us in your beautiful facility, and for really dedicating your career to your passion. This has changed. So I can't even imagine how many lives you've changed with producing these good quality effective minerals. Well, thank you very much. It's <laughs> been a pleasure to explain them to you. And there you have it, the ABCs of minerals. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time on Food as Medicine TV.